I do a lot of 3D printing and I end up with a bunch of empty spools. But what do you do with them? On a CNC Sunday, I made myself a clock and I use it every day. But I don't need that many clocks. I came up with another idea. Let me show you. I made this. I call it my spool racer. I turned the spools into tires, 3D printed some hubs, used some skateboard bearings, a little bit of hardware, and some wood that I had lying around the shop. I'll show you how I made this on today's Filament Friday. I found this spool adapter on Thingiverse from user Copyco, and it fits a skateboard bearing and it kind of looks like a wheel. I know I've got some bearings around the house here but I couldn't find them so I ended up just buying a pack of 16 on Amazon for 8 bucks. Before I spent any time building the frame I decided to print a couple of the hubs. Here's one being printed with brown PLA inland filament. It came out beautifully on this machine. So I printed another one and I was ready to test the spool. The bearing snapped into these hubs perfectly and the hubs themselves fit into the spool nice and tight. So it worked well for my wheel. I just needed to print six more of these hubs and while my printer did that I could start working on the frame. The frame was made up of 2x4s. I cut two pieces 25 inches in length. Those will be the axles and then I cut a piece 48 inches and that'll be the long piece. And then I cut two smaller pieces to help support the back axle and then I have a round disc that I'm going to use for a seat. So I laid it all out. Everything looked perfect. I had my frame. Now I needed to cut the length of the threaded rod to the proper size. By now I had four hubs or two wheels. So I put it all together and I measured it and it was four inches too long. So I needed to cut four inches off the threaded rod. I just put two nuts on the threaded rod so I could clamp down and it also allowed me to turn it and adjust it. And then once I cut it I needed to fix those threads. While having a nut on there I just backed the nut off and it fixes the threads. I used my 3D printed centering tool from episode 54 of Filament Friday to mark a center line on the axles. Then I marked the center of the axle, positioned it at the center of the board, and then used these U-nails to hold it in place. Before I did the front axle, I needed to drill a hole for the pivot bolt. And that was just recessed in there so the axle would go on top of it. And then I drilled the hole in the main frame for it. So I just pushed the bolt through into a hole in the bench, made sure I could get a wrench on it, and then I nailed this thing down the same way. I screwed the disc to a straight piece so I could run it against my fence and then cut a piece off the back of the disc. And then I adjusted my blade to 15 degrees and cut that small piece at that 15 degree angle. Then I put some glue on the bottom of it, glued it to the other piece of the disc, and I had my seat. I'm using my 3D printed corner clamps from Filament Friday number 53. These things work awesome. I just clamp them in place and they hold everything square. I drilled four holes and shot four screws to hold the axle to the frame, then flipped it over and used those tiny pieces in place to fill the gap between the seat and the axle. Then I just screwed the seat in place and that was ready to go. For the steering I used two really thick flat washers between the two pieces of wood and then a washer on top and a lock nut and then tightened this up with a wrench and a ratchet and that formed the steering mechanism and it seemed to work great. But now I needed to pull this back and forth with some rope so I drilled a hole into it, tied a knot and slipped the washer over it and then pulled that through the wood and then drilled a hole on the other side, slipped through the rope put it through a washer and then tied a knot. And then once I got that done, I pulled it tight and I had my horse and buggy type steering. All the 3D prints were done so now I could install the wheels. I locked two nuts against each other, added a washer, a wheel, and then another washer and then a nylon lock nut to tighten it all up. And I tightened it just enough so the wheels would spin. Then I did this at each corner until I had my spool racer. This looked great. Except I realized I had no brakes. I had to figure out brakes. So I found a little piece of wood. I cut an angle at the bottom so it would drag. Drilled a hole into it and then shot a th screw through that. Just tight enough so this thing would hold itself in place. But also pivot. And then I was ready to test it out. Now it was time to test it. So I gave it a push off and here we go. I had to use the brake because I saw a jogger coming. So I really enjoyed building this. It was a lot of fun and it only took like a Sunday afternoon to build it. 
Now I have a lot of the shop tools, but you could easily build this with a handsaw, a drill, and a hammer. It's really not that tough. I enjoyed wearing my helmet again. I used to race stock cars for many years, and this guy has been in storage. It was the helmet I wore on my last win, so it's, it's special to me. And to be able to wear it again, even though my son said I looked like a dork wearing a helmet on such a stupid little cart, oh well, it was still fun to me. The only thing I'd change is the axles. I just used some threaded rod that I got at Home Depot. It was 5 16ths, and I knew that was marginal in size, but it fit the bearings. I think I'd go with a bigger bearing, maybe a 10 millimeter center hole, which I know exists, and then a hardened axle, because I don't think these are hardened. When I went off the track to avoid the jogger, I actually bent the rear axle, and I didn't realize it until I got to the top of the hill, sat down on it, and the wheel was actually on an angle, so the weight of me sitting on it cracked it, <laughs> and I didn't bring a spare tire. How stupid is that? That was it for the day. We packed it up and brought it home, but still, I got a run in, and it, it was cruising. I, if I didn't hit that brake to avoid the jogger, I would have been really cruising by. So I hope you enjoyed this one, because I know I did. And maybe you can come up with some creative ways to use empty spools. Maybe someday we'll see this in Maker Faire. Can you imagine a 3D print community having spool racer contests? <laughs> I think that'd be awesome. I hope you like it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe. And if you want to help support projects like this or whatever I'm doing, a dollar a month to my Patreon account, it goes a long way. So that's it. It's all fixed and ready for another run. And I got a bunch of spares. Oh, the 10K celebration. I'll be announcing that over the next couple days so you can see who won the TiVo Tarantula 3D printer kit. Plus, a second prize from Matter Hackers and a third prize, the hat and shirt from Ultimate 3D Printing Store. So stay tuned for that. This thing was a lot of fun. I'm going to have to build another one so I can race somebody. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.